So here we are on the road again, Helios Media and Pyre Media. And what great adventure do we have today? Well, I thought we'd go and uh, visit the Amish, see what they're doing. And uh, I want to see, I want to sort of explore the Amish country on the west side of town because normally I go to the north side of another town where the uh, I, I've become friends with a lot of the Amish up there but I know very little about the Amish on the west side of this town and in the couple encounters I've had with uh, with them have been I don't know sort of strange. And can we stop now that we are passing the driveway so I can get coffee? Sorry. I, I didn't I didn't know we were coming in here. No, you didn't because we were preparing for uh, you know, our road trip. So, we'll be back as soon as I get some coffee. All right. All right. So, after taking a little break to go get a beverage, we are truly on the road, are we not? I guess so. Slowly making our way out of town. We are. Why are not, we going so slow? Well, I like to. Uh, are we in a hurry or what? Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh. We are not in a hurry. Not at all. These jaunts can be rushed and. Uh, a little bit, uh, you know, anxiety provoking, but not today. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, do you care to, uh, okay, so we should probably tell uh, the folks that we live in, or I live in, uh, a relatively rural place in a small town which some people already know, but uh, it's surrounded by farmland and uh, a lot of those farmers are Amish. So what, but you have been a much longer term frequent visitor here. Uh, so why don't you tell us what you, don't shake your head, you're a frequent visitor. No, I'm shaking my head because I think I'm on the wrong road. Oh, well, why should... Uh, yeah. Why should today be different than any other day? We'll go, through, we'll go down here anyway. Let's yeah. see what's down here. Let's do Look, that. Look, there's the, uh, you know, the, where they uh, process sewage. Well, that's nice. I was looking at a nice farmstead while you were doing that. Uh -huh. So what that. what is your general impression of the Amish community uh, in this area? Yeah, well, uh, as I was saying, the, the ones that I've encountered north of, uh, of us here are very, very friendly, very rather outgoing, and, uh, you know, they're happy to do business with you. And the ones that I've encountered, the couple that I've encountered on this 
side of this part of town and are a little bit different. I, for instance, uh, I went, I stopped to buy lumber at one place, and uh, the guy there is kind of is wondering why I stopped. Um, seemed like. Well, did he have a a business that? Yeah. Okay, that's a good start. Uh, I don't know. It was very that's aloof. That's interesting. Very aloof. And, um, uh, one time I was in the, in the grocery store in town and, uh, I had one of the, uh, older Amish gentlemen was looking at me like I was the weirdo, you know, mm. here he was dressed in all his Amish garb and whatnot and, and, you know, in a, English store and looking at me, staring at me like, uh, what are you doing here, weirdo? Well, did you say anything friendly to him? Like, oh, no, I was good, not, good afternoon, was, sir. Not at all. I was, no. uh, I was standing in line, I wasn't even close to him. Oh, uh, why don't we clarify for the audience? You just used a term that maybe not everybody is familiar with. You said an English store. What is What does that mean to us in well, our area? Well, it's not what it means to us. It, it's what it means to them. You know. What, and can you explain that? Okay, well, um, to the Amish people, they call us, anyone else, I guess, uh, English. I don't know. I don't know why, but that's that's how they refer to us. Well, um, I guess uh, you know it's like uh, how Muslims refer to us as infidels. No, no, huh? no, no. <laughs> it's not quite the same. <laughs> well, just as you know, an example. I'm just no. It's not the same at all. I'm sure they don't look at no. They don't look at us in that respect. In that way, but just you know, as a uh, sort of an analogy. Well, it's a poor analogy. Okay. You started out great. <laughs> you started out great, and then you fell off the truck when you brought in uh, uh, a completely different culture. So right. it's my understanding. Wow, we're actually following hoof tracks. Just you know, as I look yeah, up. Yeah, I guess we are. Um, it's my understanding that most of the um, Amish population who first came to this country and brought their, um, you know, their, their faith to this country came from the lowlands. It came from um, Dutch country and, uh, and that sort of thing in Europe because they were being, and, and some French, I believe, some Swiss, uh, they were being persecuted for their plain, straightforward lifestyle. Uh, again, remembering that the uh, Roman Catholic Church pretty much had uh, their hands in a lot of civic affairs and weren't happy with uh, you know, the likes of the Protestants of any description. So, interestingly, my family, the only reason I know this, and I'm, and I'm spitballing off the top of my head from research I did, I don't know, five years ago. Interestingly, my family has one outlier who married in. Um, a lady by... Uh, the surname of Amman, which is a very um, well dispersed name amongst the Amish and Mennonite communities in the United States because they all started out pretty much in Pennsylvania and uh, Northern Virginia and moved west to Ohio and kind of, uh, you know, 
a group of them kind of stopped there in western Ohio and then picked up stakes and moved west again and north, and that's where uh, my relative... It's like uh, an underground house. It looks like a very cool house. I like that. It's built into the side of a, of a rise, intentional or otherwise. So that's how... That's my understanding, and certainly anybody in the audience who has better information than me well, is uh, free to leave a comment and let us know that we neither one of us know what we're talking yeah, about. Well, they 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 speak some form of German, uh, like in their services and amongst themselves, stuff like that. Right, but you do know that the lowlands are. Right next to Germany, right? Well, if you say so, no. I'm not a big map reader, are you? I love maps. Oh, I, okay. What do you mean, not a big map reader? Uh, well, I, maps. I would think that you would know where Germany, Switzerland, Belgium, and northern France are relative to Germany, but maybe not. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. The term lowlands can pertain to any. So, uh, where are we going at this point? Uh, down another wrong road. Awesome. Uh, A dead end road, no, no less. Yeah. Dang it, I was looking for Blades Road. Somehow, didn't find it, couldn't mm. find it. So, you sent me a couple of articles this week. <coughs> Do you remember? No. No? I know. I, I remember sending them, but I don't remember what I sent you. Well, uh, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, at any point today, do you think we're going to go get some Ben & Jerry's ice cream? Oh. Okay. I, I, you know, I, hmm. maybe. I brought bottles to return. <laughs> oh, well. But I, I'm not going to support that uh, company anymore. Hmm. And and why might that? Be? Well, I mean, I I knew I, I you know I knew they were liberal, but I didn't. Once they start shoving it in your face, and that, that's that's when I, you know, that's it. That's I'm it. Done. You're done. I'm done with them. Okay, so you so let's uh, for those few people who don't participate in social media all that much. Let's uh, flesh out a little bit more why you're a little gar a little uh, cranky about uh, uh, Ben & Jerry's. Uh, they put out some kind of flavor called resist and you know it's and its meaning is uh, is uh, they don't hide it. No, I would say they're pretty out there. They're fronting, is my impression. Yeah. And so, what flavor or what? Uh, I don't know. I, well, I can tell you. I can't remember exactly what's in it because when I saw the tweet about it, I just ground my teeth and moved on. Um, it has something something in it like caramel, which I love, and I don't really. Uh, you know, Ben and Jerry's is, okay, so Ben and Jerry started out, you know, two guys making ice cream, trying to, you know, build their empire without, you know, uh, going through the regular channels, right? Just, and what I mean by that is have some big company like Seal Test or if they're even around or whatever, and make your ice cream for you, slap your label on it, and, you know, they actually made the ice cream. So good for them, you know, that part, good for them. And then, you know, they became famous with their, which I almost said just a second ago, their uh, uh, Cherry Garcia. That was a huge hit. Yeah, I love that ice cream. That's my favorite kind of ice cream. Oh, boy. Well, you know, you drag me on these things and you go, oh, look. What about this? Just like we said last week, and I say, oh, there's that A-frame that I like so much. With 
Why did they put a carport in front of it? That's kind of dumb. For those of you who can't see, it's really a beautiful log A-frame, badly positioned on a very small lot, but it really is beautiful. So anyway, now I lost my train of thought. Bummer. Um, wow. Hang on a sec, folks. All right, we may cut some of that out because I totally lost my train of thought, but we are jumping tracks. I got momentarily distracted by uh, the water levels. So uh, let's, um, let's reverse and have you interview me this week as opposed to last week. Well, I got prepared to do that. <laughs> what? Uh, jeez. Oh my gosh. How come you're so crazy? Define the term crazy. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. <laughs> There's no. Uh, look, once again, everyone, everyone else knows that term. And you have to have it defined. Um, Who's everyone? <laughs> Who's everyone? Anyone that you know? If I if I if I'm in a normal conversation and I uh, say, "Ah, oh, that person's nuts," they know what I mean. I don't have to explain myself. How come you can't? How, what, you know, I don't get it. So what's your question? So how come you're nuts when you're not? I mean, you're nuts because you're you're just as crazy as any other woman. I don't know. Let's move on. All right. Why don't you ask um, me a, a real question? But, well, that's the only. Uh, um. All right. Well, what? What do you what do you enjoy? Uh, okay, so you came from you grew up in town, albeit a small town, and then you've lived in larger urban areas. Uh, apparently, on purpose. Why? And but yet you seem to uh, prefer a rural atmosphere. Um, so how do you reconcile your choices? Well, when I was a little girl, um, the town we lived in was in transition from being actually a village um, and it had, you know, a central main street as many, um, as many small settlements do. And we could walk three or four blocks and the whole, uh, we had covered the whole of downtown. That was it. Three or four blocks. And as a very little girl, um, when I was out with my mother, that was long enough because it was three or three blocks, one, two, three, four blocks from our house to get downtown. And then if we walked up one side and down the other, and then uh, home, you know, that was about an hour's worth of uh, walking for a little girl. Um, you know, that was enough. I was very little, I was under five at the time. Well, that was enough. And that was my mother's, uh, you know, window shopping was her big thing. We did go actually into stores, but that was her big thing. So that's one pleasant memory of a small town. The other pleasant memory that's almost as powerful is the atmosphere um, in the small town. So my father uh, liked to go down to the local diner, of which we had like two or three in this in this four block, you 
no run. Um, Naps? Uh, not Naps. We went to one that you don't even know about. Mm. Uh, there was a gas station, uh, one street west of us and four streets, uh, you know, to get to town. And next to that gas station was a diner, uh, an old fashioned swivelly stools and booth diner. I don't think there were any tables, but uh, I was a very little girl and there may have been tables between the bar counter and the, you know, the booths. And my dad, uh, uh, once in a great while, I can only, if, I can only remember a handful of times and the truth of the matter is all those memories are smushed into one utilitarian me memory where we would go down there, my dad would order breakfast, I would order pancakes, because it's, you know, like the thing you can get me to eat when I don't want to eat anything. And um, this was a big deal. This was, uh, you know, breakfast out with daddy, which, like I said, happened so infrequently that, um, you know, it's basically one memory. And the strongest impression I have about it is that when you walked in there, everybody knew you, everybody said, hi, how you doing? How's the wife? How's the kids? How's your dad? How's your mom? Blah, 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 blah. That's what I knew as a little girl. And right. over the arc of my adulthood, that has receded farther and farther away to where it became fixed in my head that I would never see that again. Does that answer your question? Kind of. Yeah, I guess so, kind of. But, uh, okay, but then why did you choose to move to, uh, you know, uh, urban areas? Well, uh, when I lived on one side of the state, the side that I grew up on, I didn't have a choice. I had to have public transportation because for most of my adult life, I didn't drive. Um, there were a couple of times when we did own a car or I owned a car uh, and then, uh, but most of the time I didn't drive. And so I had to have uh, a bus system to rely on. Now, where we grew up, the bus system is notoriously bad. I mean, with a capital B A D, bad. Um, and over and and I was when I was a young adult, I was also a young mother, uh, raising kids by myself, and so I had to, I tried to be within walking distance of uh, what we needed, so that I, you know, if I needed groceries, I could get them. If I, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I didn't really have an economic or a, or a functional choice. And the couple times I moved back uh, to, our, to my hometown where you and I uh, uh, became friends, it was functionally impossible without a car for me to um, take care of our needs because the one grocery store in town closed just about the time, you know, that my kids were toddlers, my older kids were toddlers. So that really put a stress on me and it put somewhat of a burden on my mother. And, you know, I made the choice to move away from our hometown. And then when I moved across the state to the best side of the state, um, it was more for personal reasons. I had my own personal reasons, but I also had a teenage son that I wanted to ensure got through high school, which long story short, that gamble um, paid off because it was just uh, he and I that moved. My oldest child was already out on her own, making her own way in life. So again, economic, personal choices, but also economic necessity and um, logistics necessity because the bus system on the best side of the state is 
a dream come true. And so does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I guess so. And does it make sense to you, or is it crazy? Well, no. No, it makes, it makes sense. But you're supposed to be interviewing me. Yeah. Um, uh, hmm. <laughs> I'm having trouble coming up with uh, a uh, intelligent question here. Really? You with the IQ that everybody would envy, you are having trouble coming yeah, well, up with... Well, that's... Wow, that's, uh, folks. I don't know about that. Wow. There's a reason he went to a boarding school, let me tell you. But I would think that this you would be, you know, bouncing up and down. This is your chance to put me on the spot to the whole freaking world. And you're at a loss. Well, the problem is I'll, you know, tomorrow I'll think of a 15 questions to ask you. Okay. You know, when you put me on the spot like that. I'm like, it's like when you were asking me questions uh, last week. Um, you know, I figured out, a couple days later, I figured out, uh, what you were actually asking me. <laughs> um. Oh, boy. Okay. And so that's why my answers are probably inappropriate. Uh, as a well, fact. your your answers and opinions <laughs> might be inappropriate on any day, but, you know, <laughs> does that matter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. I'll, I'll relieve you of your burden so that, you know, at some future time, you can try again to interview me. All right. All good. right? All right. So we stopped at a little um, farm store, which is the way um, a lot of the Amish in this area vend their products. You have to know where the stores are. You have to know the area and know where the farms are. So what did you buy? I bought some honey and some maple syrup. And is there a particular reason why you bought honey and maple syrup? Um, I've been encouraged to uh, Get rid of some fruit that's in the freezer. And so I thought, yeah, I'm going to make, I've got, my daughter gave me some apricots, uh, and probably two years ago that I haven't used yet that mm. I was going to make wine with. And uh, so uh, that's, I bought the honey to make the wine, the apricot wine. And uh, and you can still use the fruit that's been in oh, the freezer for two years? Oh, yeah. Good to know. And oh, okay. and what did you, else did you see in their little store that you liked? Well, they, their baskets uh, were really nice, well-made, um, and reasonably priced, I thought, for uh, you know the amount of labor it would take to make those. Right. I agree. I agree. Um and so, I mean, I have really, I have no use for a basket. <laughs> I'd like, I'd probably like to buy one just, just to put on display, kind of, you know. Oh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I can find some uses for some baskets. Oh, well, out on your little homestead there, but yeah, you sure. know, that's just my opinion. Oh yeah, I mean, I lady and. Three or four little kids. Three little kids? Four little kids. Well, that's not being fair. There was a young lady, and then there was um, a girl who was probably between, between 10 and 12, and then three little kids. And they were very nice to us. And what did we learn from the young lady who waited on us, the older girl, young lady, whatever? Uh, I didn't learn anything. From oh, that. my goodness. Which is why you started out with the wrong answer in the first place. Oh. 
I learned, or rather, I had confirmed for me very politely that it was fine for me to take pictures of her cats uh, and her baskets, but I should not take pictures of them. Well, you learned that? I knew that. Well, okay. But you seem so to you be arguing. That. You seem to be arguing with me that it didn't matter. And I said, it did matter. So. Yeah, if they don't know it, it doesn't matter. Okay, if I had, um, if I had a black cherry stand in the middle of uh, summertime and you had a hankering for black cherries and I happened to be out picking cherries and it was an honor system stand, would you take my cherries without tossing money in my honor no, box? No, of course not. Okay, what's the difference? Oh, gosh. <sighs> There is no difference. This is a trick question. It's no, not. it's uh, it, no, it's uh, there's a difference. Okay, well, I don't see the difference. Not stealing anything from you. Stealing their picture. I, so what? Oh my god. Disrespect. No disrespect. It, just the opposite. Okay. Well, clearly we disagree on that one. So let's move on. Maybe that's part of what. The undefined crazy is in me. Yeah, uh, there you go. I'll go along with that. Okay, because I respect their right to decide whether they would like to have their picture taken or not. That makes me crazy. Hmm. All right. Uh, you know what? Fine. So be it. I'll I'll uh, proudly wear the crazy label whenever. Uh, yeah. You know, if you were. Uh trying to demean them in some way by taking then I would say yeah that's not right but if you're saying look at these um, cute little Amish children then what the heck's wrong with that the issue is whether I would take their picture without their permission or not. Ah, I'll wear that crazy label proudly. We do seem to have quite a, well, you do on your side of the county. We live on different, different areas of the county. And on your side of the county, you seem to have quite the uh, contingent of wild turkeys. Yeah, that's true. Right now. Hurry up. Uh, all right, uh, we just got distracted again. So, uh, what were we talking about? Turkeys. Oh, sh turkeys. Yeah, you were going to tell me about the turkeys. Yeah, no, I've got pretty much all all winter and uh, early spring. They're starting right now. I, they, as I was driving out, there were s several flocks of turkeys. Not in my backyard, but right next door um, and uh, normally all winter long they march one direction across my backyard uh, in the morning and then uh, march single file in the opposite direction in the evening it's kind of kind of funny and, and you know, a lot of times they'll roost in the trees behind Behind my house there. And why uh, why are they putting out a parade for you, do you think? I, well, because <laughs> I think one of the neighbors feeds them. Ah, I see. In the winter. So there's grub to be had. What yeah. do turkeys eat? They, they eat a very diet. I think, he, I think they get fed uh, corn, but... Uh, I mean, normally they, they eat insects, they eat, uh, eat acorns, uh, you know, whatever. Stopped and took another picture. We were uh, talking about the wildlife over on your side, and I was asking you about birds, and we got into a discussion of turkeys, and so what other, you know. Yeah, well, 
first of all, you know, if you have something in mind, <laughs> yeah, so I built an owl house, and um, I actually have had two different owls that occupied it, and, but, you know, both of them, they... They were there for a couple months, and then they they left. I don't know why, but uh, both well, what street would owls. Your, what what would your expect? What kind were they, and what would your expectation be? Well, I I, I guess I don't know really, but uh, they were both screech owls. Um, one was a little more. The first one, he's a cute little guy. And he would, uh, he would stand right out there um, and uh, sort of scope the area. And uh, I like that guy. I don't know, I don't know why he left. Uh, and I don't know if it was a he or a she, but... Uh, and then, uh, well, he left and then... And then I cleaned that owl house out. And it, when I did that, it, there were three intact squirrels, uh, dead ones, that came out of there. Hmm. Uh, Maybe it was getting a little crowded in that owl house? I don't know. Um, and then, uh, then, then I got another one. But the the, the next one, a little more secretive. And uh, I could only get a like a picture of it of it sticking its head out the, the hole in the, in the owl house. Kind of, uh, yeah. I could, you know, you could see him. See it sticking its head out, but that's all. That's all I ever got was it sticking its head out. It wouldn't. I never got a. Never saw it actually come out of there. Never saw the whole thing. So um, now, as I recall, this this whole uh, owl thing, with the hut, building the house, it was a pretty big deal a couple of years ago, and specifications were. You know, scoped out. So this wasn't just a slapdash project, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. It was, uh, um, yeah. I mean, it was a, uh, it was something where like you say, it, I guess owls are they have their preferences, and so I made it, made that uh, owl house to. Uh, to their liking. Um, We're speaking about the specifications for, you know, owls. Yeah. They like what? Uh, well, you know, things have to be a certain size, and you know, the hole has to be a certain size, and uh, and then they like apparently wood shavings in the bottom of that. So can't imagine where you would find wood shavings in the <laughs> middle of. You know, sawmills galore, but whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and plenty of those in my, in my garage floor, so. Um, <laughs> you know. of wood shavings from your garage floor. Uh, you were saying? So, anyway, I mean, uh, so, you know, I was happy to see after. It, it, it wasn't immediately, uh, wasn't immediately occupied, but. Eventually, it was occupied by a couple different owls, so it was uh, somewhat rewarding. Right now, I think it's occupied by squirrels. But, uh, hmm. Maybe that's the problem. The squirrels are drunk Amish party every Sunday. Oh God, let me Sunday. hang on. So we just got distracted again and stopped to take a picture, and the picture. Uh, which you can see on screen has an interesting saying on it. And so, what do you think about a sign like that? Well, I, you know, I think that's. I don't know what's going on in this neighborhood, but uh, uh, that seemed 
rather disrespectful to me. Okay, so so that so where the arrows on the sign are pointing is actually pointing to an Amish farm, correct? Correct. And we can surmise by the look of the neighborhood that on one side of the road are all non-Amish people, and on the other side of the road are Amish farms. Correct. Is that? Yep. Okay. So, so your opinion is that that, that is disrespectful uh, to put a sign up like that pointing to the neighbors, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, it could be just one huge joke among the neighbors. Could be. Or... Uh, on the lower right hand corner of that sign it says no hunting or trespassing so maybe the idea respectful or not is to get you to stay off their property maybe yeah, here's amish school oh this is very cute hang on so for the most part you know we we're talking and then <laughs> There's an interesting picture to take, and we lose track of what we were talking about. But you, but the upshot is, unlike my asking for permission to take pictures, you really feel like those neighbors are being disrespectful. Well, it seems that way. Once again, you don't, you don't know what's been going on around here. No, we don't, because this is not. This is close to my house, but as opposed to your house. Uh, but you know, this is, um, this is the, this is the rural neighborhood, if you will, in air quotes. Uh, actually we're not even, it's not that close to me. We're not even in the same county now, but never mind. That's not important. Was the side of the, um, county that you said you were kind of a little confused about their uh the amish demeanor yeah they seem very friendly so the, has your has your uh opinion changed um uh, yeah, maybe a little bit there they once again they do seem a little more you know i think for instance um i think that the amish on the northern Art there, I think they'd let you take their picture. They would. I don't think they. I don't think they'd really care. Whereas these people, they seem to care. I don't know. They, I could be wrong. Well, when I asked for asked permission to take care of their wear, take a picture of their wares, um, the young lady was uh, careful to point out to me respectfully, just not them. Yeah. And I don't. I don't know. That doesn't bother me. <laughs> you know, I don't have to have a picture of them, uh, per se. Uh, their, their wares and their farming techniques and their livestock satisfy me just fine. Okay, here we are doing the other part of our adventure, and this is the pyre part. Uh, you can see that I have built up a base I've already burned down uh, one layer of wood so that it's coals, and I've started up my uh, I've started up the debris from around my fire ring. I can't go too far this side, but you can see I've cleared out all the area, and I can pretty much tell by where the grass ends and where the scrub starts where my fire ring needs to be, and I have some fresh. Uh, Kind of fur of some kind, I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. And it, and the leaves, even though they're green, are burning hot and fast because of pine pitch. So I am ready to throw on some leaves and get this baby smoking. See you in a minute. You can see that we've thrown a, a load of leaves on, and then we've thrown a load of mixed wet and dry uh, twigs and so forth on top and that as soon as it catches provides a framework to throw on more leaves and still get uh, air current under the fire so it doesn't get smothered and 
sorry about that. If it does start to wane a little bit, uh, all I need to do is stick a dry piece of brush in here and get some oxygen in there. And it'll flare up just like that. There's, there's dry pine needles in there and whatnot. So it'll flare up again in a minute. And I will uh, be ready to dry and roast some more leaves. This is kind of a ritual in the fall. <clears throat> uh, you would think that Pyramedia would be the one doing this, given his handle. But he actually prefers to run machinery. So this is my job. And for the conditions here, the way the wind comes in, the way it blows, the usual general dampness, ah, here we go, got a nice little flare up. The general dampness of the material, I know exactly uh, how to balance this out. So the fire continues to burn and um, and I don't smother it. So I got to tend to this. I'll be back in a sec. In a clear example of how, you know, everybody does things differently, when Pyramedia brought down his uh, two tarpfuls of leaves, it, he pretty much dumped it right down there in front of my fire ring, which I had to clean out. So I let it burn down a little bit. I put some fast, hot burning, uh, conifer on top and uh, it's almost time for another load. I do want to let it smoke out just a little bit because I do not have as much dead wood as I have had in the past. So it's going to be tricky keeping this fire going without a nice thick coal at the bottom of this mess. But I've done this a couple of years. Uh, you know, it takes two or three weekends depending on a lot of different if it's wet or not and the leaves are wet but they are just dry enough uh, some of the under leaves are wet but they are just dry enough that we can get a lot of this burned and it might only take two weekends we'll see back in a sec I build a scaffolding a second scaffolding with twigs because that's all I have but that's okay because there's a, a bed of coals underneath and right there behind those flames is an air hole that will suck, as long as I don't stand in front of it, will suck air up and under into uh, what's unburned and still combustible underneath. But uh, for right now I have to go find some more scaffolding so I'll be back in a sec. Folks, we're almost at the point of diminishing return. I've uh, dug another hole right there, put some fast burning stuff on top, and there's plenty of heat down there. There's plenty of uncombusted material down there, but uh, you know, the sun is waning as you can see over the very fast moving mud hole. Uh, that was, if you can look up there, that's where the bank should be.
And that was our little adventure on uh, November, the first weekend in November. Um, the truth of the matter is I was more focused on getting audio content and I um, didn't take a lot of pictures this time. I, I took enough, but unfortunately, I was running out of space on the phone. The the card, the SIM card is almost full, and some of the commentary uh, got left on the cutting room floor, so to speak, because it actually didn't record. So our outro, which uh, we recorded on the way back to my house, um, didn't we? It didn't actually record. So, uh, sorry about that. It was a thoroughly enjoyable day. Both of us really, uh, it was a great day. We really liked it. We did stop and look at uh, uh, one uh, or two properties. One that sticks out in my mind, um, you know, vacant land. Very pretty little place. And... Uh, so we hope you enjoyed that little road trip with us. It's uh, always, you know, we, we, there's plenty of places around here to uh, explore and, um, you know, shoot. It's beautiful here, in my opinion, and uh, you've heard me say that before. So for Pyre Media and I, and the grousing shepherd in the background, who didn't go with us. Uh, we hope that you have a blessed Sunday and we hope that your week is productive and um, don't forget that right now, if you are just rolling out of bed, you're late. Wherever you're going today, you're late because we resumed regular standard time in the continental 48 states and so you should have turned your clock back. And uh, on Tuesday, if you're not aware and you're a registered voter, go vote. Doesn't matter what political flavor you are, it's your right and your responsibility in this country. So for me, Empire Media and the Grousing Shepherd, until we see you again, have a great day.